First, it was parking fees. Then, robot bartenders and layoffs. And now, MGM is at it again. This time, they've raised their resort fees, and they may have gone too far. Let me hear you say just one thing. You're insane. No! Oh. <laughs> no, well, the other thing. Come on, I know it's just dangling up the tip of your tongue. Let me hear just one, please. Superman will never- WRONG! Is the ace of Vegas, the ace of Vegas. Welcome back, Spinners and Sharks, to Ace of Vegas. And now, I stumbled upon an interesting series of articles from a lot of different journals over the past few days. But I think the one that really sums it up is from Casino.org regarding an increase in resort fees on the Las Vegas Strip, specifically at the top-tier MGM properties. Now, the irony of all this is that MGM Resorts International has decided to increase its resort fees for the year during a nationwide lawsuit that started in Washington, D.C. against Marriott Hotels and their resort fees. I think to fully appreciate it, you'll need a little history on resort fees, what they are, where they come from, and the like. If you're already familiar, I advise you to skip ahead to the time code on the screen. Okay, let's begin our history lesson. Now, for our international viewers that are watching this video with confusion, I'll explain just what a resort fee is. A resort fee is a mandatory taxable fee that hotels tack on to a room rate. They're usually charged per night and tend to be expensive. They have become increasingly common in America. Mexico, and Latin American countries with a booming tourist industry. An interesting thing to note is that resort fees, or destination and facility fees as they're known in some circles, are actually illegal in many countries. The United States has no such law, and as a result, they tend to show up quite a bit. And, while they're common in other parts of the country such as New York City and Miami, no tourist destination is as inundated with them as the Las Vegas Strip is. The five-mile stretch of road doesn't have a single hotel or casino resort that doesn't charge a resort fee, some of which are so high that they actually outstrip the price of a room. Now that you know a little bit about the issue, let's summarize the article. I'll link the full one in the description box below, but here are the basics. So presently, Washington DC's Attorney General Carl Racine has filed suit against a major hotel chain by the name of Marriott Resorts International. You may know them from their hotel brands like Courtyard and JW, and their hotels haven't skimped on the resort fees, with the lowest of them sitting around $9 a night, and others upwards of $90 a night, according to Racine. Racine goes on to call the fees deceptive and claims that Marriott is hiding the true pricing of their rooms through these fees. Now on the other end of the spectrum, within a day of the lawsuit breaking, MGM Resorts announced an increase in their resort fees at three major properties on the Strip, the Aria, the Bellagio, and the Vidara Las Vegas, the company's premier five-star themed resorts. And it's no small increase either. These resort fees will increase to $45 a night plus tax, with some calculations putting the sum total to $51 a night after tax, which is no small fee given the natural price of some rooms. So this has got me thinking, what are the pros and cons of resort fees? Well, if we're talking cons, there's a lot of them right off the bat. The first one is for the customer. Let's say you've been booking a room with your budget of $80 a night and plan to have a great three-day trip at a resort like Paris. Mirage or Cosmo. Well, when you get to the end of your booking, instead of the $240 plus tax you expected to pay, you might be in for a shock when you realize your subtotal is going to be close to $360. That's a 50% increase. In addition, the fee may cover amenities you can't use, like the outdoor pool in the wintertime, or maybe ones that you won't use, like the daily newspaper included in the Palms Resort fee. In some instances, a budget hotel like Flamingo or Luxor may charge a resort fee that costs more than the room itself, more than doubling the advertised price of a stay. Also, these resort fees often cover the resort itself, but nothing else. So other fees, like parking fees, may be added to a hotel that ultimately makes a consumer reschedule a vacation or perhaps cancel it entirely, which isn't ideal for the resort itself given that they may have less frequent business or miss out on business entirely. The worst part is, there's no limit to a resort fee, so a hotel chain can advertise a $6 room rate if they wanted and charge $150 a night. So a hotel chain could advertise a $6 room rate if they wanted and charge a $150 a night resort fee. You probably won't see an example that extreme in the states, but it makes you think. Now, after doing a lot of digging and research, I did discover a few pros to resort fees. The main one is for the company that charges them, because, well, they make more money. 
MGM was one of the first casino companies to try it, and it worked so well that every single hotel on the Las Vegas Strip followed suit. The second one, surprisingly, is a benefit to the customer, and in that there are less a la carte options to deal with. Before, hotels would actually charge separately for gym access, Wi-Fi, notary, and the like, so the resort fee rolls all the features into one, making the bill simpler. And finally, there may be a method to the madness. This was actually submitted by a forum member on my Vegas gifts, guides, and giveaways, and while I really don't feel like this is justified, it ultimately makes sense to me. The following is a direct quote from Eric D. The explanation of why they don't is not to screw the customer, it helps the customer. Most rooms that are bought are bought through travel sites like Expedia. These sites take a percentage of the room fee. Notice they don't get a percentage of the resort fee, which is absolutely critical here. Let's say a hotel room is $100 a night and Expedia takes 15%. The hotel makes $85. If that same room is now $70 with a $30 resort credit, the hotel instead makes $89.50. Now if they just charge the 100, the hotel would make less and end up charging more to make up for it. I'll let you guys decide if that's a reasonable explanation or not. I can see it going either way, but I kinda get what he's saying. So with this lawsuit here, the future of resort fees and room rates is uncertain, but there are a few things you can do to protect your wallet so you don't become a victim of this drip pricing trend. Tip number one, book directly with a hotel as a Players Club card member. Hotels often give you a bit of a better deal than a third party travel site does if you're traveling to Vegas. This deal is magnified if you happen to be a member of their players club. These club cards are free to sign up for and provide instant discounts to rooms, dining, retail, and more. There are even some perks that waive parking fees and other reservation fees to make your trip a bit more bearable. Tip 2 is to play real rewards games. Win slots, Binions, and My Vegas slots are just a few examples of real reward apps that you can play. They provide you with complimentary buffets, show tickets, and most importantly, free rooms. Now, depending on the app, you may or may not be responsible for taxes and fees, including that nasty resort fee, but you won't pay the actual room rate. $45 a night at Win and Encore sounds a lot more reasonable than booking a $180 a night room at Bellagio, then paying another $51 a night if you ask me. Tip number three, play during your stay. If you're so inclined, put your casino club card to work and play a bit during your stay. Depending on your level of play, you may be able to get those resort fees waived, or something else on your bill comps, like that $70 stake you thought was a good idea at Excalibur. Word of caution, you may very well gamble more than your resort fee is worth, so don't get too far ahead of yourself using this technique. Hopefully this video was informative. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a like on this episode, and if you want to check out any of my past or future videos about Vegas and saving money there, feel free to click that subscribe button. That's all the time we have today as Spinners and Sharks, so Ace of Vegas is signing out, wishing you strong hands and happy spinning.